Okay, Job chapter 39. Now remember, Job is self-righteous. I mean, as a judge, he helped and took care of widows. He helped the poor people, which a judge should do. He offered sacrifices for his sons just in case they sinned. He's been rebuked by Elihu properly. And since Elihu, God has spoken. <clears throat> and God has laid out since chapter 38, Okay, Job, if you're so good, what can you do? And chapter 39, we're looking at God, the creator of the animals, and God, the caretaker of the animals. If you're so good, Job, okay, let's see what you can do. Knowest, not, knowest thou the time that wild goats of the rock bring forth? Right. Do you know when wild goats, goats give a uh, pregnancy to their little goats? Or canst thou mark when the hinds do calf? How are you doing, Job? A man that had camels, had asses, had, had sheep, had all these animals. Do you know when the goats are going to give birth and the cows are going to give birth? And I don't mean, you. Get, I don't know what the period of time is. I don't mean you get the period. Do you know each and every calf and each and every animal? Jesus said God's eyes are on the sparrow. God, we're going to see, feeds the animal. God takes care of the animal. And yet God will leave off feeding a whale that men want to save for a man to get down on his knees at Calvary and repent and get right by Jesus Christ. God will run over to that position. But God's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And it's funny how humans put bird feeders out, and we do, and yet God feeds the birds. Job, you're so important, you're so good. Do you know, and I don't mean birthday, happy birthday to you. Have, I mean, do you know the birthday of particular goats in, in kind? Can thou number the months that they fulfill? Do you know how many months these animals are, are, are with, with child? Or knowest thou the time that they bring forth, the pregnancy come to the end for the animals? This is animals. We're talking about all animals. How are you doing, Joe? Yet God, our creator, knows everything about everything that he created. They bow themselves, ready to give birth. They bring forth their young ones. They cast out their sorrow. So even like humans, where God told Eve, in sorrow you're going to give birth, because man sinned, even the animals travail in birth thanks to man sinning and sorrow and like the human being there's a place says in the bible the woman gives birth to her firstborn child and then she forgets all the anguish and sorrow because a man child has been born same thing with the animal their young ones are in good liking well to do they grow up with corn food they go forth and return not unto them. They, there are some animals that they grow up, and they go on, and they don't go back to their parents. And Job took care of his sons and daughters. And Job has <coughs> sacrifices to his sons and daughters. <coughs> and they had their, their day, the Bible says in Job chapter 1. What about the animals? One of Job's things, listen, my ground doesn't cry out. I treat my ground good. I treat my livestock good. God's like, okay, what about animal? How you doing in knowledge? You know so much. You got a degree, human beings today. They got degrees. They're doctors and they're PhD. What do you know that God doesn't know? Who has sent, and they're all divided. We just did the wild goat. Who has sent out the wild ass? Now we're looking at the ass. This is the animal that Jesus Christ said, go get. He sat upon it and he took that ass and he rode it through Jerusalem. You don't hop on an ass and think you're going to go for adventure and riding. God, the creator, can, but men can. You got to train that animal. Asses do not want people on them. They do not want that burden. Who has loosed the bands of the wild ass? Jesus Christ did. Come on, Job, hop on that ass and start riding it. 
Jesus Christ will. Whose house I, God, had made the wilderness and the barren land is thrown. Listen, you that barren land. You know, you, you picture the asses, the Grand Canyon. God made that. And there are places that, you know, they're barren. It's a barren land. It's a wilderness. Not much. Wilderness is not much for people to live in. But God said, you know what? That's just perfect for the ass. And I'm going to put him there and he can survive there. Man can survive. Listen, God had to provide Israel with manna while they were in the wilderness 40 years. God had to provide water of the rock. And ass can do pretty well. He scorneth the multitude of the city. He don't care about the city. He, he doesn't like it. Neither regardeth he the cry of the driver. <laughs> the guy that's riding him. I'm not listening to you. And when God made that ass talk to Balaam, Balaam wasn't listening. But the ass listened, and God told the ass, I want you to preach a message to Balaam. Okay, what do you want me to say? And it took three times for Balaam to realize, and then the, the angel of the Lord, that here I am. And the Bible says about the ass, if you don't redeem the ass with a lamb, you're going to break its neck. We are an ass. And I'm not cussing. We are a type of ass that we need the lamb. If we don't have the lamb, just kill him. And John says, he that has not the son has not life. It was a miracle for Jesus to, to hop on that ass and ride into Jerusalem. The range of the mountains is his pastor. And he searches after every green thing to eat. Does perfectly well where he is. He likes where he is. He don't like man. He don't like the city. This is God in his, cre in his creatures. Now, the famous unicorn. You can't have a unicorn in the Bible. We got to change the name. But it's okay to have a unicorn in mythology. Mythology can have a unicorn, but God can't. You say, what is a unicorn? Well, we're going to read verses 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'll tell you what a unicorn is. It's a one-horned animal. What's it look like? A one-horned animal. I don't know everything about the Bible. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee? All right, so the first thing about the unicorn is he's not going to serve. He's not a service animal. <coughs> or abide by thy crib. Crib is where an animal is, where you keep an animal. He is not going to be put into a barn. He's not going to be put into a pen. Can thou bind a unicorn with a band in a, in a furrow? A unicorn is not an animal that's going to do the field. Or will he harrow the valleys after thee? He's not a plow animal. He is not an animal of burden. Like a cattle. Like an ass. Or ox. Will thou trust him? Because his strength is great. Okay, a unicorn has great strength. Not good for man. If this thing, if it does not want to be in a crib, if it's not going to serve you, and it's not going to be put to the field, and if it's a great strength, it's going to be a great strength against man if you try to do it. Job, can you, can you make a unicorn plow your fields? No. Wilt thou leave thy labor to him? Are you going to have that unicorn do your labor? Will thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barn? Whatever that unicorn is, you would not find it on a farm. You would not find it out there working the field. It's not that kind of animal. Now we're going to look at the peacock and the ostrich. Giveth thou the goodly wings unto peacocks. Look at that. We look at the male peacocks. That, that's beautiful. God says even that's beautiful. Yes. 
or wings and feathers onto an ostrich? Now, that's one ugly bird. They just look ugly. The ostrich, which leaveth her eggs in the earth. So she takes her eggs, digs a hole, and puts it in the earth. And warmeth them in dust. So she don't sit on them. She lets the ground do it. And forgetteth. Oh, animals have forget. That the foot may crush them. I don't know if it's just her foot. Foot of man. Foot of animals. But evidently these eggs are put in the ground that. Something walking by can crush those eggs. Or that the wild beasts may break them. Dig them up, break them, and eat them. And there are many animals that will do that to eggs. She is hardened against her young ones. That's not a good that's not a good mother. As though they were not hers. As yeah, somebody else's kids. You, that's her attitude. Those are your kids. Uh leave me alone. Her labor is in vain without fear. She has no fear. I don't care about them. A, ch a chicken will make and scratch the ground to tell her little chick, hey, get over here, get underneath mom, there's trouble, there's danger. The animal kingdom has animals, when they have their young ones, they will have some kind of warning system, hey, you got to get over here or you're in trouble. The ostrich, who cares? Because God uh -oh, has deprived her of wisdom. It is God that said to that ostrich, you don't know how to be a mother. You don't know how to be a protector of your young. Neither has he imparted to her understanding. So there is no wisdom and no understanding of that ostrich to take care of her own. And there are many human parents today, human mothers today, they have no understanding and no wisdom how to take care of their children. And then they wonder why their children today are acting like they're doing. They're as an ostrich. You would not want somebody to say, oh, that mother over there? Yeah, she's a type of ostrich. What time she lift up herself on high pride and scorn at the horse in his rider. You know, look at that, look at that stupid horse over there. Uh, excuse me. Look at your children being suffering, being eaten by other animals, and you're sitting there looking at the stupid horse. Well, look at their children. Look how their children act in church. Uh, what about your children? Oh, they're perfect. They're nice. They're great. You're an ostrich. All right, now the horse. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou closed his neck with thunder? Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. You don't want to look at a horse face to face if he's angry. And he's not going to be afraid. You you walk up, you, you don't even get close to the grasshopper. If he sees you, he's off. You can get as close you to the horse. The horse will be like, okay, what do you want? I've been told by a horse trainer, a person take care of a horse. You don't ever get behind a horse, they'll kick you. I'm like, that's it. No one have anything to do with that. You stay over there, I'll stay over here. You want to ride him? No. Only horse I'll ride is a merry-go-round horse. He don't have no problem with me. This horse is a terrible creature, and I don't mean terrible bad. I mean, it inspires terror. He paweth the valley and rejoices in his strength. Oh, there's a little pride there. Look at me, I'm the horse. He goes on to meet the armed men, in a battle horse. A horse will go into charge. The horse will go into a battle. The horse will go into war. I'm going to... Old war horse is what they call a man. He mocked you that fear. <laughs> hey, look at me. 
And you would look at the ass, the ass is like, huh? no, not me. And the horse ain't looking at me go. Rabbits and all that would run from the battle. The animals would fear the the the, the bombs and the bombs and the weapons and the, and the clashing of weapons. The horse is like, let's go <laughs> right into it. Neither turneth he back from the sword. <laughs> Going right into battle. And when you go to a park, you never see a soldier in the park riding an ostrich. A statue never has a, a, a man in a uniform ready to go battle upon an ass. They are shown upon a horse. And the position of the type of horse, I forget what it is, how that puts it was would show that that man died in battle or if he survived the battle. The quiver, that's what holds the arrows, rattles against him. And the glittering spear in the shield, he's in battle. The sword is out. Let's go. The, the, the arrows that are being shot, the, the shield and the spears, and all the men of war are doing what they're doing for war. And that horse is like, let's go. I ain't quitting. That horse will go into battle when the rider is falling off. He swallowed the ground with fierceness and rage. He gets angry. He's going into battle angry. Clogs of dirt are flying up. He's eating it. And clogs of smoke. He's, eating, he's going in. His mouth is going. And he's in the venture of the fight. Neither believeth he that neither believeth he that it is the sound of the trumpet. That trumpet, the bugler of the cavalry, well, that, that gets him going. He saith among the trumpets, Aha! Aha! And he smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captain shouting and the shouting. That excites the horse battle. That's the horse. How you doing, Joe? How you doing? Oh, you took care of a widow? That needed properly be taken care of? Whoa, Joe, come on up to heaven, Joe. Let me put you on the throne. No, Joe, excuse me. I gotta go feed some goldfish over here, okay? They haven't captured a goldfish yet to put them in a the jar. I gotta go feed them, right? I got some dumb animals over here. I gotta show them how to eat. I got some sparrows walking around. Does the hawk fly by thy Job's wisdom? Come on, Job, you're so smart. I see three men over here with their mouth open. I see one man who, who's been listening to me doing right. I have not seen no hawks come up to you, Job, and say, what does it say? Oh, how do I fly, Job? I have not seen any baby hawk chicks come up to Job. Can you teach us how to fly? You're so good, Job. You know, this man that looked at the birds that, you know, had to try to flop and fly before we got into the air. And stretch her wings toward the south. Does the eagle mount up at thy command? <laughs> He's talking to Job. Remember that mighty eagle, Job, does he get your permission? Does he call Job up on the cell phone that's not here? Hey, Job, do you see a mouse down there? You do? Okay, hold on, I'm going to get it. No, that eagle can see miles and miles and miles away. From up the highest cliff of the, of the cliff, that eagle has such eagle sight that he can see that little mouse down there. And man, he puts his thing and he's guided to that mouse where that mouse is going to be. That mouse is eagle food. Come on, Joe, how you doing? Wait, uh, you could not stop your animals from being stolen? You allowed your animals to be stolen? You allowed some of your animals to be killed? Really, Job? And make her nest on high, very high. When we look at the three heavens, and there's only three heavens, the first heaven is from the ground to as far as the eagle will fly. And when they say the eagle has landed on the moon, man went too far. Man's domain is from the ground 
to where that highest eagle will fly, and that's it. About the cloud. Anything after that, you're in the realm of principalities, the devils, and fallen angels. That's outer space. She, the eagle, dwells and abideth on the rock. The rock. Mountain. Oh, if man would dwell upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Upon the crag of the rock and the strong place. The eagle goes where man hasn't been going. Upon the rock. There's not many trees and plants where the eagle lives. It's a high. From thence she seeketh to pray. Well, there she goes. And her eyes behold a far off, very far away. I've got that written in another place in my Bible. I should put it there. I don't have it, but it's mild. And the speed that that eagle does. Her young one, her chicks, wherever you go, also suck up blood. Dead. Dead animal. I believe the eagle is an unclean animal for that. And where the slain are, where the horses are, where people die, vultures, there is she. She's an unclean animal. Why? She goes after remains of dead animals and dead men, and that's my dinner. Vultures are listed as unclean animals because they, you know, the road kill, they thank you, the driver. You ever been driving down the road and you see a whole bunch of birds and they're flying around a, a dead animal? That's why they're unclean. They're eating blood. And we're not to eat blood. And at Armageddon, God calls the birds and says, listen, I got a feast of horses, captains, lieutenants, and all kinds of men of military. Come and feast and drink the blood of the horses, the animals, and men. 